and let's make the world a better place. Look, this country has this cool thing and that country has that great idea. The US and Canada, I don't know what is happening there, but those kind of prices should be illegal. Hello, it's Irina again, the Siberian who's gone international. Today I decided to make a second video about the things which I like about Finland, but first I would like to explain the purpose of these videos. The purpose of my video series, the things I like or don't like about a certain country, it's not to brag about how great the things are in a certain country, neither it is to bash a certain country. The purpose is to show to people from different parts of the world uh, that look, this country has this cool thing and that country has that great idea. So the more people know about these tiny things which make lives better, the higher are the chances that eventually the cool ideas will be adopted all over the place more and more and we will end up living in a more comfortable world than we have now. I'm sure I can totally change the world because I have the total of 230 subscribers but you have to start somewhere right okay let's begin so when I moved to Finland and a few years later after our move my parents have decided to build a house uh, I found out that apparently you cannot just build whatever you want and at first I was like what the hell this is your money this is your house why can't you just have whatever you want but no there is actually a selection of colors that you should choose from i mean to paint your walls and there is a selection of roof types and the colors of the roofs also if you want to plant some trees in your yard you also kind of have to select from the list of the trees which were approved for that area also the siding material uh, in some areas you can choose bricks, in some it can be only wood and at first that sounded crazy to me because you know I couldn't understand that how can you be told what you are allowed to build on your own land but then I kind of saw it from a different perspective because for example like the problem that Russia has is that if you go to the area with the private houses it just everything you can imagine it is such a crazy mixture you can have a hut which is falling apart next to it you can have this Disney style castle then next to it there is this modern Scandinavian style house then next to it there is this gothic style castle and then next to it there is another uh, building which you cannot even see because it is surrounded by the huge fence and apparently there are like no rules what kind of fence you can choose so again everyone just picks whatever and some houses have pretty fences but that's rare usually just this metal walls painted it with one color which are not aesthetically pleasing so if you have to choose between that craziness and the stylish neighborhood which i will show you the examples of then i think i would go for a stylish pretty looking neighborhood and i wish this kind of rules were adopted everywhere because this kind of harmony makes it so much more pleasant to walk around those neighborhoods and to look at them Promotional pause. If you're enjoying the information you're getting out of this video, maybe consider subscribing and clicking the like button because it helps to promote these videos because YouTube is not doing it for me at like at all. If you could share it somewhere, you're my hero. The second point is that people are encouraged by the government and by laws to buy real estate for themselves. Let me go into details. So I whine a lot about the taxes in Finland, but surprisingly there is an exception. And even compared to the US or Canada, Finnish rules on buying and selling real estate are a bit more person friendly than in the US and Canada. So let me give you the example. So you know, in most countries and also in Finland, when you buy a property, there is this sales tax, I think it's called, and it's 2%. And normally when you buy it, let's say for 100,000 euros, 
uh, you have to add 2% there and pay 2000 to the government. But if it's your first home and it's the first time you're buying a property for yourself to live in it, you do not have to pay those 2%. So, you know, when it's your first home, it's already quite difficult to find the money to make such a huge purchase. So this tax relief helps a bit. Another tax which doesn't exist in Finland but exists in quite many countries is uh, the property tax. Okay, you don't have it in Finland only if you have an apartment. So if you live in an apartment, like for example I do, um, I don't have to pay this annual property tax just for owning the apartment. I think it's viewed as a basic right to have some basic kind of real estate. It's another thing if you own a house, uh, because in that case you do have to pay a property tax, but if it's a basic apartment, you don't, which is sweet. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Also, if you can show that you've lived in your apartment or a house for two years without breaks, uh, that you weren't renting out your property this whole time, then if you decide to flip it or, you know, resell it, you then do not have to pay the tax on the profit you're making. So let's say if you bought an apartment for 100,000 euros and then two years later you sell it for 120,000 euros from this profit 20,000 euros you do not have to pay any tax to the government if you've lived in this apartment or house yourself for two years if you haven't then the tax is huge it's 30 percent <laughs> but i think it's still pretty good i think in many countries you have to pay that profit tax anyway and in some countries the amount of years you have to live in your property is much longer than two years i think in russia it's five then one of the things I find really cute is the famous baby box. Uh, so if you give a birth to a baby in Finland, you are eligible to receive this baby box for free and it is stuffed with all the essential basic things that every baby and his mom needs. I think the idea is to give an equal start to every baby when they're just starting their life and you can also take money instead but it's just 140 euros. I don't think many people prefer money because you get so much more if you go for a baby box. In those baby boxes you can find a lot of clothes for babies both for inside and outside and that that is useful because those overalls are expensive and winters are harsh usually not this one but still um, then you have nappies a mattress and the baby box itself can be converted into a crib so you can put your baby there for I don't know how long does it take for them to grow but I guess for a few months at least you can use that one it also contains bathing products for a baby and creams and a hooded bath towel, nail scissors, hairbrush, toothbrush and well I guess you can use it like in a year when you will actually get some teeth. A couple of basic toys like a picture book and a pack of condoms. I guess in order to give the parents a bit of a break, I don't know. <laughs> Another thing which I enjoy and appreciate is that during the winter, I mean those winters when we do have snow, not this one. Instead of putting salt or different chemicals on the roads, Finns put these tiny stones. I think there's a crushed stones. It's not sand. It's just these tiny, tiny stones, which are great because they do not destroy your shoes. They do not hurt the paws of the pets. And also they are reusable because in the springtime, uh, those special cars come and collect them back and the next winter you can use them again. I, I bet some of those stones are lost every season, but the fact that they are still reusable is pretty impressive. So reusable, environmentally friendly and pets friendly. <laughs> and the fifth thing which I love is how cheap is the internet in general and especially the data plans for the phone. So basically, I'm not even sure that limited data plans exist. I have always had unlimited ones and the prices are very cheap if you compare it to the US and Canada. I don't know what is happening there, but those kind of prices should be illegal. So just to give you an example, well, right now I do not pay for my phone at all because it's paid by my company, so I haven't seen phone bills for a couple of years. But when I used to, I think my monthly payments were around 20 euros a month. 
that included unlimited internet and some set of calls and texts. But who even uses those functions nowadays, right? <laughs> and I remember when I moved to this apartment, I was like super lazy to buy the router to figure out where to call. So for, I kid you not, for six months, whenever I would need internet, I would just open a hotspot on my cell phone and I was using my mobile internet in order to serve the internet on my laptop, watch movies, watch YouTube. And then after six months, I finally bought a router and I finally called the internet provider and asked them to connect me. And do you know how much it cost me every month? 3.5 euros. It's not the fastest internet, it's only 10 megabytes per second. Second? Is it second? But for me it's enough. I mean, I upload videos to YouTube. It happens rather quickly. I can watch Netflix, I can watch YouTube. So I can stream videos and that kind of speed is enough for me. If you want, you can go for a fancier one. You can get a higher speed, like 100 megabytes. It's gonna cost you more, but it's still not gonna be insanely expensive. Let's actually open the website of one of the internet providers and check out their rates now. So yeah, as you can see, limited data is not a thing. Uh, the price depends only on the speed and also the more expensive option you select, the more data you get to use abroad. So as you can see, it can be either 10 or 20 or 21 or 23 gigabytes per month in other EU countries. But these are the most expensive options. Let's go to the budget ones. If 10 megabits per second is enough for you, you can get it for 25 5 euros a month. Well, there is also like a really slow option for 10 euros a month. And if you're younger than 26 years old, then you can pay 23 euros a month. And you also get unlimited internet with the speed 150 megabits per second. Regular phone calls within the country and text messages are included. And you get unlimited data in Nordic countries and in Baltic countries. And in the rest of the EU, you get 10 gigabytes per month. I hope you found some of this information useful and if you live somewhere abroad maybe you could start pushing the agenda that these kind of cool things maybe need to be adapted in your country too and let's make the world a better place right okay that's it for today subscribe like i will see you in the next video bye